you yes. I, I just read literature that actually refutes that, so I don't want to you know make a blanket statement either way. But <clears throat> the popularity, I just think, is in like you know, there's some ease of application. I mean, just remove a, a you know a whole macronutrient, but. Let's just be honest. Anytime the average person removes carbohydrates, they're not counting calories. They're not counting macros. You remove a whole macro from them. What did you do? You created a calorie deficit. Are they going to lose weight? Of course they're going to fucking lose weight. Like, it's not rocket science. The same as intermittent fasting. Like, tell someone to stop eating for six hours. Okay, so they didn't eat their cupcakes at 8 a.m. They still ate their cookies at 10 p.m., but those cupcakes that are no longer counted in their calorie deficit or or in their... uh, you know, calories in versus calories out is creating a deficit. So of course they're losing weight. Like it, it's, there's just nothing magical about it. Um, you know, you've got some zealots that have gotten behind it. Um, but then you dig into literature and you start to see like long-term effects and you see its application in, in current training protocols and, and you actually see it becoming more detrimental than good. And so I'm not really a huge fan of keto in, in most applications. When you say more detrimental than good, what, what particular things are you referring to? Yeah. So, I mean, agree or disagree, like Western or, you know, like current training modalities are at their all time high relative to intensity. Yep. Um, right. I, I think we can all agree on that. Like in 2019 training today is, is more intense uh, than most. I mean, we're seeing a lot of support in literature for more volume. Um, but, you know, there's there's very high intensity training proponents. And then, of course, there's the CrossFit influence on the world. There's the metabolic conditioning influence on the world. And so you're just starting to see a lot of these things. Um all of those training intensities become glycolytic, right? At some point, like higher intensity training, metabolic conditioning, it's glycolytic activity, period, the end. Like we, we can't like dispute that. That's fueled by fucking carbohydrate. And there's not anything in the ketogenic diet that's going to support fuel from that or recovery from that. Um, and then you take that and you put it into a setting in Western culture today where, you know, things are like stress is at an all time high. Uh, you know, we're just stressed out as individuals. There's more traffic on the road. There's, uh, you know, we're sleeping less. We're over caffeinating. We are, um, you know, just as human beings, we're trying to do more. Like there's this hustle and grind culture that exists in 2019. And so you take that um, with, you know, an inability to really create a parasympathetic shift. Um, and all of a sudden you have a recipe for disaster with the ketogenic application to higher intensity modalities. Uh, one another topic we're going to cover in another podcast is kind of health versus performance. So I don't want to go too deep yes. into that, but yep. um, what's maybe some applications of keto? You know, I think we see as uh, I think you agree with us in a scene also like Instagram, YouTube, obviously one of the biggest influences on fitness culture right now. And a lot of these people that maybe have a lot of muscle or lift a lot of weight are now saying sure. that they eat ketogenic style diets and i tend to agree with you i think 90 to 99 percent of these people actually aren't eating that style diet and they are doing it for a long term but that's a different topic for a different day of what people (laughs) post and what they actually live uh what what are some maybe applications of keto that you might see is is it a health thing is it a weight loss thing is it you know like you said uh, i think there's fewer applications than people think it's not a broad stroke but uh there are some applications yeah yeah i mean i I think if we were to look at anybody that you know again let's go back to like the whole charles poliquin statement of earn your carbohydrates well even that is you know somewhat misspoken um like if we use that as a foundation of understanding like where do carbohydrates fit in first of all carbs are a non-essential nutrient and any keto zealot will fucking tell you that right away <laughs> well, you don't need carbs to live yeah, it's the no one, shit it's the one macro we don't we're need. not disputing that yep listen we get it like you don't need it that doesn't mean it's not optimal and it doesn't mean you also don't need the fucking resistance train in your life yet 